Welcome back to Trade Delicious, guys. And once again, I'm joined by the wonderful James. James, thank you for joining us. Why don't you tell the lovely people at home a bit about yourself and the business you represent? Uh, so the bit about myself is um, that I have worked for um, some of the world's largest banks, so JP Morgan and UBS, always in futures and options, mainly in commodity uh, futures and options. And um, as a physical uh, sugar trader, actually, when I first started. And um, I only came into the retail equity business um, in 2020, so late in my career, um, when I was offered a opportunity to come into a large industrial metals group um, that happened to have a retail equity brokerage as part of its business. And they wanted to know uh, if they could expand it, if they could build that business, and if there was an appetite in the UK for um, a kind of specialist voice brokered uh, equity and uh, futures business. Fantastic. And options desk mm. became a thing. Yep. Talk to me about the, the beginning of that, why it was started, what it is. Yeah, so, so the actual company that I worked for was called AMT Futures. Mm -hmm. And um, we wanted to really specialize in the equity space for people that wanted to either protect their existing store of wealth um, to generate additional income from um, their existing store of wealth, in other words, uh, the shares that they own and perhaps um, using options around those um, holdings to generate more income, uh, or to just trade tactically. Um, so you might think long-term equities are always a, a very good long-term hold, but there's an awful lot of volatility in the middle that, that, that I want to just either sleep well at night or take advantage of tactically. Um, and then AMT Futures didn't really sum up what we were doing. It stands for Amalgamated Metal Trading and it's a futures business. Um, so we wanted it to be more generic and perhaps more specific to the retail um, community. And the reason we called it Options Desk is because at the heart, our product is a desk of people, a desk of brokers that have been doing this for, for actually decades. Um, they're very passionate about the use of, um, of uh, equity derivatives to achieve those three goals I was talking to you about. And um, we wanted a name that would really accurately reflect what it is that we do. Um, and so although we've invested an awful lot in technology um, and the optionsdesk.com website, what we really want to do is ultimately talk to our clients and help them to achieve their financial goals. Awesome. And one thing that amazed me is, is you do it, literally you speak to the clients. They, they phone in and they make trades through human exactly. contact, which is something we don't get a lot of these days. Correct. Talk to me on the decision that you've decided to almost reverse history and go back to the way it was before. What, how did this come about? It's true. So in the UK, um, after the global financial crisis in 2008, um, derivatives became a very kind of toxic word. They were Warren Buffett's weapons of mass financial destruction. Um, and the uh, then Financial Services Authority uh, basically thought that retail investors should not be exposing themselves to leveraged derivatives instruments. And, and the trouble is that everything got thrown into the same derivative basket. It might be collateralized loan ob obligations, it might be collateralized securities, collateralized debt, um, all sorts of sort of mortgage-backed securities, these sort of things um, all basically got tied with the same brush. Um, the exchange-traded, regulated futures uh, um, and options business that has been going really for the last 250 years plus also got put into that bucket. And then what happened is that the um, financial ombudsman who protects retail investors um, started coming down heavily in favor of retail investors that had traded these um, leveraged financial instruments um, and typically found in favor of them over the sell side that was, that was um, facilitating the trading of that. So if you layer onto that now, um, the consumer duty which is coming in at the end of next month, which goes from treating your clients fairly to ensuring your clients have a good outcome. So it's basically gone from fair to good. Um, we asked ourselves, if we're serious about helping investors use these brilliant, brilliant tools for very clearly stated objectives, it will not be enough just to give them a platform and say, good luck, hope it goes well. We, we want to make sure that when we speak to them, they understand them. Now, the answer to your question commercially um, is that you do charge higher commissions than 
obviously if you're trading on an electronic platform, not talking to anybody. Um, but we think that those commissions pale in comparison compared with the um, help that you will get in in clarifying in your own mind what it is that you're trying to do uh, and then working out what is the appropriate strategy to do that with a very clearly defined and understood um, articulated risk reward um, uh, understanding. Yeah, so, so when people call up, they want to put on a position, they'll, they'll explain what they want to do to, to one of your guys and, and they'll help them show different ways that you can do that? Exactly. So, so the first question, as I said, is are you looking to protect your existing store of wealth? Are you looking to generate income? Um, are you looking to um, trade tactically in terms of either portfolio construction or specific time delimited events? That's the kind of starting point. Um, then we'll discuss, obviously, your um, years of trading, your understanding and, and, and the wealth that you have, because you don't want to put all your wealth into these things. You really want to use them as an overlay to that existing store of wealth. Um, and then when we've established all of that, it's what is your appetite for risk. Some people want to take a very small part of their portfolio and trade it aggressively. Um, other people want to trade much more conservatively around a larger part of their portfolio. So the, the, the thing about options, really the clue is in the name. There are so many different things that you can use them for. Um, you have to be very clear in your own mind what exactly it is that you're trying to achieve before you can decide which is the most appropriate strategy. Are you finding a lot of people like the approach of, of calling up rather than, because obviously in a technically advanced world, especially the younger generations, they love to see everything and, mm. and do everything. Have you found a, a, a good transition there? So, so it's quite funny. One of the um, uh, events that we attended, um, somebody came up to us and said, have you got a platform? And we said, no. And they looked at us disbelievingly and said, what do you mean you haven't got a tap? And he said, that is the most wonderful thing I've heard all day. You mean I can actually talk to somebody and go through this? And I think the point really is that if you're just making a binary decision to buy and sell, um, then that lends itself to a platform extremely well. You don't really want to talk to anybody. You don't really care about what anybody else thinks. Um, you have a trade that you want to do and you just want to express it as cheaply, as efficiently, as quickly as you possibly can. When you're looking at options, um, uh, you're not just trading um, a directional price. You're trading time. You're trading volatility. You're trading the variance of, of one thing to another, the beta or the delta. So there's lots of different things that you can look at that you can layer on. So I might be bullish, in which case I'll buy a call, but I might think calls are very expensive, so maybe I'll sell a call to finance the call that I want to buy, in other words, a call spread. Mm -hmm. um, it might be that I think volatility in current markets, a great example, um, the S&P has been up phenomenally, uh, really driven by seven stocks. I don't know whether now with the Fed pause, we're at the beginning of a bull market or with the inverted yield curve, we're at the beginning of recession. I kind of think it's going to go 20% up or 20% down. I just don't know which. Well, in which case, that's perfect to buy a straddle or a strangle. So, so there's all sorts of different options. I either think it's going to be very volatile, in which case I can sell volatility, or with the VIX trading where it is historically incredibly low levels now at about 13, you just think this is a great time to be buying options because the volatility is so low. That's a big component price of the, uh, of the option. So now is the time to be buying them rather than selling them. So all those things are what we think about. Mm, awesome. Well, James, it's been an absolute pleasure. Where can people find more about you and, and your business? So um, www.optionsdesk.com com has really everything that you need to know and um, there's a big resource sector in there there's a whole lot of trades and insights that you can have a look at um, and the way that we use options to trade um, news events it might be um, the upcoming um, uh, announcement by a federal reserve uh, bank on their interest rate policy or whatever it is um, there's always a trade for any of these things um, there's also a strategy explorer in there that you can um, uh, enter whatever information you want and depending on how you complete that form, it'll tell you which options and option strategies would be most appropriate for the way that you've answered those questions. So hopefully there's a big resource there. And then of course, don't forget, you can always pick up the phone. As always, James, thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, it thank you very much. Hey guys, Jordan here. Just wanted to send you a personal little thank you for sticking around and watching us here at Trade Delicious. If you did enjoy the content, consider subscribing. Everything we do here is completely free. And of course, we have some other video suggestions here which you might love. We will see you in the next video.